part one of this build, I outlined which components I was gonna use to build this electronics sandwich, sort of to put into a Mitsuko, Mitsuko, QQ190, Falcon, any of these Pure X racing frames. Now I'm going to show you how I actually constructed this module. The first thing to do is to depin the components. Uh, we're gonna need to depin the ROSD and the X4R receiver. Uh, you can order a naked X4R receiver if you like. Uh, you could also use the XSR receiver, which doesn't have any pins on it, uh, but my preference is the depinned X4R for the reasons I talked about in the previous video. For depinning, I prefer a medium pencil tip. I prefer a medium tip because it carries a little more heat than a fine tip. The lead-free solder used in a lot of factory components uh, is really reticent to reflow. Uh, so you can need a little more heat, uh, like a pencil tip, so I can get in there and just hit one pin at a time and pull them out, and I'm not putting any heat where it doesn't need to go. When I'm deep pinning, I like to use hemostats. Um, I like the fact that the hemostat can lock on to the pin automatically, and then you can just pull it out without having to squeeze with your fingers. It makes it very convenient. If you don't have a set of hemostats, they're super useful for all kinds of RC-related things. First thing you gotta do is get this little plastic retainer off so you can pull the pins out one by one. Uh, you can sometimes pry it off with your fingers, pull it off with the pliers, or sometimes you need to cut the pins and then just pull the individual nubs of the pins out one by one. Next, I will lock onto the pin with the hemostat and that will allow me to pull at the pin with one hand and push at the board and then hit it with a soldering iron with my other hand. You can see here I'm kind of gripping the hemostat with some of my fingers and pushing on the board with my other fingers. And then I can just, this is really nice for if you only have two hands and uh, you don't have a vise or something, you can clip the board in. I'm just gonna hit the pin with heat until the solder flows and pull. You wanna be careful when you're doing this not to put too much heat in and damage the board. If the solder isn't flowing, you can add a little bit of flux or you can add a little bit of rosin core solder to the joint. Uh, to help encourage the factory solder to flow. So here, I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron and wet the tip of the iron. It'll help the heat move quickly into the joint and, and melt the existing factory solder and get that pin right out of there. Another thing you can do is you can add a little bit of flux or rosin core solder to the solder joint itself. Again, that'll just help encourage it to flow. But what you don't wanna do is just keep hitting it with heat until it gives. If it's not flowing immediately, something isn't right, and you're gonna damage the board if you keep heating it. This is probably the biggest mistake that beginners make. Another mistake that you might make is pulling too hard on the pin. If you pull hard enough, you'll just rip the pad right off the board. It shouldn't take a huge amount of force to get the pin to give way. You can see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this solder to flow. Don't get frustrated, don't try to force it. Just figure out what the heat is not getting into the joint or something isn't going right. And if you just keep at it, it oh, there it went. <laughs> well, the pin did come out and I did not pull the pad off. You know, just be patient. If the board is getting hot, stop, let it cool down. Just figure out why the heat's not getting into the joint and, and, and do everything by the book and it'll go all right. Here's a better example of what it looks like when everything goes right. Just a little bit of heat, pop, pin comes right out, you're good to go. And here is the RROSD and it's been de-pinned. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little dab of fresh solder onto each of the pads uh, in anticipation of soldering the wires on. Later, the fresh solder will carry a little bit of flux with it and just make everything nice and ready to go when I'm ready to put the wires on. Just a little dab on each of the pads. If your solder looks like this, like a little soft serve ice cream cone, that means there's either not enough flux or not enough heat and you're gonna to wanna to go back and fix that give it a little more heat or just put another dab of solder or flux on there and get a nice smooth um, ball or, or dome, if you will. Uh, just, you always wanna be on the lookout for bad joints. It's not even a joint yet. Just you always wanna have good technique and have everything right. Just good habits to get into. The next thing we're gonna do is the X4R receiver. And the first thing to do is just take this cardboard cover off. Uh, just cut this tape and peel the cardboard right off. This is the X4R's RSSI pad. Uh, it's this little pad here, and you'll notice it's partially covered up by the glue that's holding on the antenna connector. 
Over here is the smart port pin, which is the one closest to the edge of the board. And I'm gonna solder a lead to the back side here, this little connector here that's the same pin. Now I'm gonna depin the board, and for a long header like this, I think it's usually easier to just go ahead and either cut off the plastic or just cut the pins off and then remove the little nubs of the pins. As you cut these pins off, try to leave yourself something to grab onto with the, with the hemostats. If you cut them too close to the board, you won't have anything to grab onto and it'll be a real pain to get them off. The next thing I decided to do was solder my ESCs to my PDB. You'll notice here that I'm holding the PDB to the bottom plate with these metal screws. I do not recommend doing this. And the reason being that the metal screws will transmit force when the bottom plate flexes in a crash. Uh, they'll transmit the force to the electronic components and be more likely to damage them. I strongly recommend only using nylon standoffs and nylon screws in your main flight controller stack for this reason. The nylon screws may be more likely to break uh, but it, I'd rather have a nylon screw break and have to replace it than damage a board and have to replace a more expensive component. That's just where my priorities are. Another thing you're going to want to decide at this point is where your main battery lead is going to come out of the plate. The ROSD has the main battery pads and you're going to want to have that facing the right direction before you solder up your ESC wires because once the ESC wires are cut to length, then you're going to sort of be locked in. Now this doesn't matter so much for the Mixuko because the camera pod on the Mixuko is a square. So you can always just rotate the camera pod 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and have the camera pod face whichever direction you want it to face. On the QQ190 frame, the camera pod is a rectangle. So you could flip it 180 degrees front to back, but you couldn't turn it to the left or the right. So you really need to make sure that the battery lead is sticking out the right direction. What direction should the battery lead stick out? Well, the most obvious place to have the battery lead stick out is the back. Uh, and on the Mixuko, that may be okay. The Mixuko, the Krieger, and the Mitsuko are designed to have a video transmitter that is flat, parallel with the flight controller, and has an SMA port sticking up. Okay, if you're using something like a TS5823 where the SMA connector is sticking out of the back and the video transmitter is going to be mounted vertically, then you cannot have the battery lead sticking out the back because it's going to interfere with the video transmitter. You could also use a video transmitter with a pigtail and put the video transmitter wherever you like. So my suggestion would be if you're going to use a TS5823 mounted vertically, then you're going to want to have the battery lead coming out the side, not the back. So now I'll very carefully remove the heat shrink from my ESCs, being careful not to damage any of the components, of course. And then we'll figure out where the ESC is gonna be placed on the arm. And I'll usually like to put the ESCs pretty close to the motors and direct solder the motor to the ESC. Just figure out how long the wires need to be to accomplish that. Next, I'll desolder the factory wires. You're gonna to wanna to be really careful when doing this not to damage the ESC, and some ESC manufacturers will void your warranty if doing this. The reason for that is that the FETs on the ESC are very susceptible to static, electrostatic discharge, and if you don't have a properly grounded soldering iron, and I don't, by the way, uh, then you can easily damage them. The damage will not be immediately apparent, but it will result in premature failure of the FETs. So what you're doing here, I'm technically voiding my warranty and you know, that's life and most people don't notice the difference, but you do wanna be aware the best practice is to have a grounded soldering iron tip for this. Again, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it to flow and just a little bit of rosin core solder with some flux in it will help that go. I might could be using a little bit of a heavier tip for these bigger wires. Do be careful not to accidentally desolder the little resistors that are right next to here. You just gotta be real careful with this and get it done. If you're consistently having trouble getting the solder to flow, your iron may not be hot enough and you may need to turn it up, but a common mistake that beginners make is having their irons way too hot and burning off solder pads and damaging components. So it, you wanna eliminate all the other sources of failure to heat transfer, a dry soldering iron tip, a dirty soldering iron tip, etc. before you try to turn up the heat. 
So then the easiest way to make sure that you get your wire lengths right is just to install the motors on the arms and work your way in towards the PDB. And that's what I like to do. When you're stripping these motor wires here, make sure you hold the wire with your finger against the arm. Do not just pull on the wire. This is a silicone wire that is soldered internally to the copper windings of the motor. And if you pull on it when you're stripping, you may damage the, that joint and damage the motor. So press the wire against the arm very firmly and reinforce it as you're stripping. Don't tug on these wires if you can possibly avoid it. The motor will usually be fine, but it would be terrible to damage a motor at this stage in the build. I'm going to go ahead and tin these wires. And then after they're tinned, I'm going to snip them so there's maybe a millimeter of wire left. I like to snip them short after I tin them because it prevents the ends from fraying and spreading. So I'll tin the long end and then I will snip it short. Now the ESC comes in and we get ready to solder. Make sure you've got some fresh solder on the ESC pads. So I'm gonna put a little bit of extra fresh solder there. So we got good amount of fresh solder and flux. So we get a nice good joint. Then we'll solder down the individual motor wires one by one. And this is not a time to be sloppy with your soldering. You need to get these joints absolutely right. So you can see, I didn't get it quite right at first. I went back and I'm fixing it. It's gotta be a good solder joint, not a, not a cold joint, uh, good contact. This is the most important solder joint probably on your whole copter. I am soldering these ESC straight through to the motors and I'm gonna use BL Heli later to reverse the direction of the motors that need to be reversed. If you need to swap two wires to reverse the motor direction, now's the time to do it. Instead of heat shrinking the ESCs in this build, I'm going to be trying the silicone extreme tape for the first time. This is a very interesting uh, tape. It, it sticks only to itself. It seals to itself and sort of becomes one thing after it's stuck to itself. Uh, it's waterproof. It's electrically resistant. It's UV resistant. Um, we'll see how it holds up. I've heard it, some people say good things about it. I'm going to be giving it a try in this build. So with a few inches of this tape, I'm going to put a layer underneath the ESC to prevent the ESC from shorting out against the arm and just provide a little bit of padding. And then I'm going to work it around the arm and I'm stretching it as I go because that stretching will create the tension that causes it to sort of stick to itself. It's a little tricky to get it to stay in place because it, it's not sticky. It doesn't stick to the arm. It just sticks to itself. But uh, with a little bit of practice, you can get it right. And through the magic of television, all four arms are now done, motors and ESCs. So now it's time to do the PDB. I'm gonna start by tinning the PDB pads. I might be better off using a little bit of a heavier soldering iron tip for this job, uh, especially when I get to the wires. For the tinning, this tip is okay. When I'm putting the wires on, a little bit of a bigger tip would probably be a good job. I just wanna get a good layer of solder on the pad, and that's gonna help me get the wires to stick. I'm gonna figure out how I wanna route my wires and uh, cut them to length. I, I am doing this with the vertical standoffs not installed, the vertical standoffs for the camera pod. I would actually recommend you do this with the vertical standoffs installed so you make sure that you're not getting in the way of any wires. Uh, I had an experience where I installed the main power lead for the QQ190 and actually it was in the way of the vertical standoff and I didn't notice it until I installed the camera pod and couldn't do it. So definitely at least keep an eye on where the location of the vertical standoffs are gonna be so you don't end up routing a wire somewhere where it can't go. I'm gonna tin these wires and solder them down to the pads. Again, my trusty hemostat comes to the rescue. <laughs> 
Now what I like to do for a joint like this where I'm gonna have four wires coming to one pad is not focus on getting every single solder joint exactly perfect because I'm just gonna reheat it when I get the next wire on and mess it up again. So I basically just get the wires to stick and then when all four of them are stuck, I hold them all down together and then hit the joint with heat and reflow the entire joint all at once. And that's what you're gonna see me do here. I don't know if that is best practice or not, but that's how I do it. It's always worked for me. It seems to produce good joints. And the same thing for the ground wires. And that is gonna do it for this part in the series. We've got our motors wired up, we've got our ESCs wired up to our PDB. In the next part, we're gonna figure out how to stack the flight controller on here, uh, how to get our receiver integrated, and work forward from here. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying.